Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the world of iRacing right here for the BMW Z4 Cup on Race Face. My name is Stephen Koenig and joining me in the box is Cameron DeBastos. Cameron, welcome to the sights and sounds of Virginia and this time with the BMW Z4, which at one point was put in a box, it was retired, they called it quits, they said it's done, it's dusted as a GT3 car, but we have brought the legend back for some phenomenal racing here tonight. Yes, good evening ladies and gentlemen, and good evening Stephen, long time no see, hey, we took a bit of a break there and now we are back, ready for some action, and yes, it's good to see the Z4 being taken out of its box to be... To be let free in the land of the free and the brave. Um, and also land of hot dogs and very, very greasy food. But uh, welcome, welcome in everybody. And uh, I hope you're ready for some very entertaining racing tonight as we see some returning names in different cars. And it is going to be action packed from the times that I've seen in the practice session uh, that we had earlier. But uh, welcome in. And uh, how are you been, Stephen? Uh, it's going to be a, a good one. I, I've been great. I'm looking forward to this. This one of my favorite GT3s of all time. No questions asked. And uh, we're going to have the guys battle it out for some phenomenal racing. I've got to say, I'm really, really looking forward to this. The BMW Z4 is where I started my GT3 racing career in sim racing. And... Uh, only got to do half a season before it was put as a legacy car and replaced with the beaver teeth. But out here in Virginia is definitely a fun one. And as you said, some returning names to the party. Troy Dolinchik, our F4 champion, going to be fighting it out. And uh, good to see him. He's looking to set the world ablaze. Luke Lucchese, Julian Familiaris, Yuri Umpiswat, Johan Ferri, Ryan Ottens of Alpha One Esports. Uh, we have uh, got Werner Swart, Jandre Kinnaman, who's a new uh, driver to the series. Jamie Reese returning. Christopher Radloff, who is uh, coming back after some time and is with Alpha One Esports. Also, a big shout out to him because they're counting... Uh, so Christopher Radloff and Chloe Ellison are counting down the days till their special day. So shout out to them on uh, that. Chloe, a good friend of mine, so I have to go and embarrass her a little bit. <laughs> uh, Byron Mitchell back out on track. Timothy Stanton, you know all too well our first place of the F4s. He's back out on track in the Z4 uh, along with... Byron Mitchell, Christopher McDuff, a new name to the track. Yaz Samai, uh, Catherine Jensen, a new... Oh, Caitlin Jensen, who's... Uh, oh, Catherine Jensen, I do apologize. Who is all the way out and having a bit of fun. One of our new drivers, Rolof Tillman, along with uh, Roland for Artie Narkel, Farney Gravenstein, Paul Herber, uh, Yuppie Simons, also a new name to the track. Robbie Teens, Gerard Reed is out there. Christopher Hoppenstall is a new name to the grid. Arno Kraus, Willem Pinar, Doe Huber, Lou Nokia, and Mario Rez rounding out our races tonight, sitting with 33 cars on the grid. Yes, absolutely, Stephen. It is fantastic to see uh, so so many cars out there tonight, and it's not only Africans. We've gotten so many, uh, so much more international competitors. The um, majority of the grid is, of course, going to be South African, but we've got people, we've got drivers from uh, um, the United Kingdom and Ireland, and then also they're from the European side. With uh, um, uh, I'm just going to say Jansen, uh, uh, my brain just went completely bad. <laughs> we completely blank there, uh, they're from the European side there. So it's great to see that there's so many different talents coming in and it's not just Africa, we've extend, ex extended our reach and it's, it's going to showcase some of the skills that are out there that we don't know really to see. Well that's it, but top of the charts for the qualifying is Troy Dolinchek, Luke Lucchese out in second place, Julian Familiar is so close behind in third place, 0.049, just enough 
to go and irritate a Lamborghini with a Porsche. Uh, for anyone that has watched the, the Nürburgring race that's past weekend will get that joke. Uh, Yuri Swart out in fourth place. Young Free trying to make up some ground as he's lying in fifth place. Jason could see in sixth. Ryan Ottens in seventh. Willem Boerter, Christopher Radloff and Werner Swart uh, out in the top ten. The times are so close. Take a look at that. All from uh, starting was originally first place down to 15th we're running in the 46s our top six now running into the 145s around virginia now to let everyone know these are baseline setups there is fixed baseline setups they can't modify the cars the only thing that you can adjust is the brake bias to go and get the car to turn in and even then it becomes more and more tricky and that's what makes these cars a little bit more fun it makes the series a little bit more fun is it takes out the element of tinkering with the car if you like myself that likes to tinker and adjust and make some finite changes well that's all gone for you in this running you're going to have to try and figure out how to drive the car as is for each of the different circuits and with the bmw z4 not many people have driven this car in a very very long time some just bought the car to come and race here at racefast.pro for the z4 cup i mean this is going to be a phenomenal phenomenal run out there in the grandstand so we got in the belly sean kirby smith all saying how's it and they are looking forward to these mad monsters going around but i've got to say the Z4 looking stunning out on the circuit but as time's running out drivers are having to push harder and harder with Jean-Dre Kitterman currently in the 11th place is top of our pro-ams ahead of a couple of our pros still mm. trying to really get the extra little oomph out of the car Jan Ferri trying to improve his lap time but Julian Familiaris is one to keep an eye out for as they come across the line it looks like that's it, and we are going to grid. Yes, it's been a very exciting one as we take a quick look here at our starting grid here for the first round, well, heat one, round one at Virginia International Raceway with Troy Dolinchek starting P1, uh, Luke Lucchese in second, Julian Familiaris in third, Yuri Swart in fourth, Juan Ferri in fifth, Ron Ottens in sixth, Jason Kutsia in seventh, then it's Willem Boerta, Van Swart and Chris, uh, Christopher Radloff running out of our top 10. Looking further down, it's uh, John Rick Kerman, Jamie Rees, and then in 13th place, we've got Jason Murray all the way from Scotland there. We've got Timothy Stanton, Byron Mitchell, Christopher McDuff, Jakub Stein, Paul Gerber, Yas Samai, uh, Ati Nagel, Doug Gerber, and then, uh, Gevers, sorry, I might have missed a few there. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, that's my then, uh, Renner Ferreira in 22nd day, and then uh, Fanny Gravenstein in 24th. Uh, from 26th, we've got J uh, Joppy Simons, Robbie Teens, uh, Willem Pinar, Louis Norkia, Christopher, I unfortunately can't see your surname there. Heppensal. Uh, Heppensal, okay. There we go. From, uh, the, uh, from the UK. Ah, the UK contender there. Gert Reed, Andrew Krauss, and Mario Russ running out our 33 gr car grid here and uh, it's all starting from the pit lane it seems Stephen. this is something new for our side this is a full rolling start for all the drivers and it's going to be a brilliant one drivers are going to have to figure out how they're going to get themselves going here who's going to be able to claw their way to victory and drivers will have to bleed out of the pits getting a little bit more pace to it out there in the world of the grandstands we do have live timing for you guys to go and take a look and support your favorite drivers not only will you see the live stream but you will have live timing so take a look in the description if you want to follow all the racing action happening here tonight and there is going to be lots of racing action this is also going to be a bit of an interesting one because we do have a race control system that will be going and showing off if there is a certain amount of incidents we may have the safety car come out and we have full course yellows striking once again so bear that in mind if there's enough incidents if there's enough problems these drivers will have to behave themselves under 
full course yellows. And that is very, very new to some. For others that race a lot of oval, you'll get to know it. And uh, for others that have experienced it before, will know the difficulties in race strategies and planning that has to be done 20 laps around Virginia. And it's all brought to you by THE Productions and likes of Raceface, the pro for the BMW Z4 Cup. Yes, uh, it's, uh, as you mentioned, Stephen, if with the possibility of a safety car, the strategies that these drivers are going to have is going to be completely thrown out the window. Some, it's completely new. I don't think most of the drivers even know about the safety car feature or even um, have used it before unless they did spend some time in the oval racing scene. But um, it's good to see that new features, new challenges are being brought out in this new season for us, uh, well, for the drivers out there, and it's definitely going to be a fantastic one. I do. I do have to say sorry though if I did put you in place and I'm a bit <laughs> I'm a bit under the weather there if, if, in terms of um, awareness tonight. But uh, no, the racing is definitely there to warm us up. It's a bit cold in South Africa. Just as we see the Troy Dollinger wheeling around to get heat into his tires and tires I'm ready for some jump back races now, Stephen. I, I'm just ready for some good racing. Yeah, Virginia, very, very tight circuit that is going to challenge the drivers to go and push themselves a little bit harder. You will see some of the drivers actually wearing a red band. That means they're in pro. Green means they're in pro-am. We have asked the drivers to put the windshield banners on for tonight. A couple of guys saying uh, good luck to Roland, Louis, Etienne, Ver Etienne and Werner, and good luck to Brandon Robert as well. But as the drivers get to the top of the hill, this is going to be one of the hardest braking zones and also went and changed up the championship in season one for not only the TCRs, but also for the likes of the Air Force. Troy Dolinchik and Luke Lucchese were very, very familiar with the top of the hill and they're going to be start curving their way down. You're going to start leaning on the brakes, doing a bit of brake drag to try and get some heat into it. Our safety car will be pulling in and we will be going racing soon enough around the final corner and it's all on the lights waiting for it Troy Dolinchek leading out the pack 33 cars and away we're about to go holding back those roaring V8s this is going to be like a world of NASCAR green flag, green, flag. green flag and away they go Troy Dolinchik getting an early jump on Luke Lucchese. Julian Familiaris trying to get his nose ahead of Yuri Umpiswad. They all blistering into turn one. Going to be a bit of a leg breaking for everyone to try and get it all together. Ryan Otten's fighting with Jason Kutsi a little bit back. But it is Troy Dolinchik who has checked out of the fight and now on the charge. Ryan Ottens and Jason could see going and battling it up, but it does look like Ryan Ottens managing to stand on the gas, gets a little bit more drive. Willem Boerter tries his luck, goes up on the inside of Jamie Reese, who then is dropping down a little bit more than planned, trying to put his nose in side by side. There you go, a little bit of contact. Oh, the two alpha ones! Alpha one, and, oh, that's 32. Now, this is going to be the question. Three cars involved now, must even with our with our driver from Scotland getting involved there. Will the street the safety car or or the, were the other drivers able to get past? It seems like everybody got the rest got involved, but that's a oh that's that, a blown engine. That's oh. Christopher Radloff going and getting a tow to pits. Uh, unfortunately, he is definitely out, but Jason Murray taking a hit on it as well. So. Drivers are not going to be happy with that one, not in plan run at all. So we're going to have no. to see how it works out. But uh, I think I think they I saw in the background there, Stephen. Maybe just I think I saw one of the awful one cars getting a bit loose on the grass there, rejoining and unfortunately collecting its teammate there. But um, I don't know why. As soon as I saw that engine smoke, I just thought, well, where's the marshmallows? Let's buy some. Let's make some s'mores here. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. But, um, Definitely Ooh. not what they had planned, but Christopher Radloff having to jump back to pits. Uh, I mean, the, the impact was rather severe for the two Alpha One eSports, and unfortunately that has thrown them down. Jason Murray being a, one of the hits on it. Uh, Doug Huber taking a little bit more cautious approach. Jamie Reese into the pits, Roland Ferreira. So there was quite a few drivers that got caught out in the wreckages 
and will now have to try and pull themselves back together. Troy Dolchik out in front, Julian Familiaris ahead, and he's got Luke Lucchese onto the back of him. Yuri Umpi Swart in the old BMW HP colors. I've got to say, I love the blue and white, the iconic blue and white. And uh, giving a little bit of a cheeky flash, saying, I'm coming for you. You have Faree and Ryan Ottens going and fighting it out. You got Jason Pizzi in a little bit of no man's land at the moment, flat out through the snake. Willem Buerta, but well done to uh, Jean-Dre Kiriman that's all the way out and having a ton of fun as we see that is Willem Buerta going and getting it all out of shape, rejoining on the circuit, but now that is in front of our program leader, Jean-Dre Kiriman, who is battling it out with Werner Swart all over the back of him. Werner trying to figure out how to get past and Werner is part of the pros. Yaku Stain also into the mix there. Long time iRacing driver and a long time viewer now actually participating. Good to see him out there. I'm glad he knows where the throttle pedal is. Yes, am I going for an overtake against Ooh, Timothy Stanton? Oh, that's oh. both out. That's oh. a car into the oh. And that, that is the second hand uh, BMW. And, and Timothy Stanton. Yeah, that's both of them. Oh, well, Timothy got it loading again, but oh, maybe a bit over eager there on the overtake, but oh, it's, it, we promised some action fans to have this, gentlemen, and uh, <laughs> so far the drivers have to love it, but um, as we see another another move here uh, being called Paul Ferber, on. and uh, that is Caitlin, uh, Catherine, who is uh, going at it. So Kath Kathleen Jensen going for the pass on Paul Ferber who is not having an easy time out there trying to fight it out. But so far, Christopher Radloff, Timothy Stanton, yes, Meyer, and Byron Mitchell all falling down the order. And uh, Jensen trying to keep ahead of Rulof Tillman. Uh, but uh, Jean-Dre Kerriman currently out in first place. Catherine Jensen in second place. Rulof Tillman currently in third place of our Pro-Am. Gaining a bit of ground. RT Nachel trying to close down the gap as well so what a monumental run for them finding great seeing christopher hoppensall also getting a great run philip pinot battling it out he's got mario rez all over the back of him so mario trying to make some time uh, getting a little bit jumpy but keeping it flat on the gas to go after pinot and then behind them we got gippy Sons and herrick reed that are trying to gain a little bit of ground as well they're doing a phenomenal job, but Yippie going, unfortunately, going Yippie off into the dirt, loses out the position, <laughs> and uh, now has to try and figure out how to go for a bit of a pass. So a couple of drivers going and making up a bit of a plan at this point. Everyone having to dig deep, but for 20 laps, 30 minutes of racing, this is going to be no easy feat for any of our challenges. Couple of cars peeling out of the pits, doing everything they can. Luke Lucchese fighting out with Yuri Umpi Swart at the top end of the field. As you said, we're in for a monster fight for heat one. And it's not gonna be an easy run for any of the drivers. And with 33 cars all out on the circuit, when the cars start mixing up, with back markers, that is going to be the ultimate challenge for any drivers. Yes, absolutely. It, with the classes start, I mean, we already see um, John Rick uh, Karaman, they're already battling out with some of our pro drivers. It's just going to showcase the different skill level, even though some pro M drivers are capable of sticking it to the pro guys. But then, of course, they also get in terms of tracks. Uh, sometimes a track favors a certain drivers. Driving style means they're faster than a certain class driver. We see it all both in the Burnout Racing and in the Sims also. But it's good to see that the incidents that we did notice earlier tonight, so the four cars that were returned were towed to pits over so fixed them. They're all out on track fighting, trying to crawl back that uh, lap they lost. Remember, it's, as you said, it's a 30 minute race. There is still so much time left for them to get some time back, especially if they have normal pace. The race is not over. As we see, Jason can see her here fighting out with Ryan Ottens. Um, Ottens being a well known and name in our uh, ACC community. And, uh, uh, and Jason can see also that these two have run elbows multiple times in the ACC. And it's great to see them racing each other in the iRacing World in the Z4 Cup. 
Now Jason could see uh, going and being a multinational winner in terms of the former Ford racing. So he is really trying to keep it all together. A uh, couple of battles all forming around, but our top three now getting a little bit close for comfort. Troy Dolinchik losing a bit of ground, and Julian Familiaris now looking in his mirror, seeing Luke Pekezi and Yuri Pompey-Swart onto the back of him. So Yuri trying to push as hard as he can onto Luke Pekezi, Julian Familiaris coming from the world of the, the big V8s, the Mobile One V8s, now having to watch his mirrors as Luke Pekezi starting to gain a bit of ground on him and make things a little bit more difficult and Yuri and Piswad also looking to join the party as quick as possible so conditions now making things a little bit more difficult it does look like the SMI unfortunately has retired the car due to catastrophic damage and uh, as much as we have all the parts sitting in the pits we've got a couple of drivers that just say it's beyond broken at this point Yes, uh, so you see the car being built back there well, I, uh, from our pit park, our content box where you see the car being uh, towed back into... Oh no, he's, oh, he's actually on the way out again, Stephen. He's back out on track. Well done to that team for getting the car fixed there. And uh, also well done to um, the, the awful one eSports pit crew there. You've got Christopher Radloff's car up and running again there after you see the engine going back into the pits, well, towed back with Spokey. Um, again, well done to all the drivers, even though... It might be a, a lap down or whatever. Well done for continuously sticking it out. You never know. That's that's a beauty of racing. Yeah, no, it's going to be a monumental fun. Uh, it's pretty much like the old F1 where you can just you go and run back. And as long as you can run back to the pits, you can jump in your second car and get going. But drivers <laughs> are having to figure out what they're going to do at this point. Time's starting to run out. And tires are going to start tapering off because the BMW is harsh on its front tires. Very, very harsh for anyone that has never driven these type of car. Well, the BMW Z4 in particular. It's an amazing car to drive. It is a legacy, but it, it is one of these cars that you can either get it right or get it horribly wrong. Uh, Roland Ferreira, though, he is on a hell of a charge to catch up to Jamie Reese, getting ahead of a couple of cars. Uh, Jamie Reese a little bit further down and then planned after a bit of a contact earlier on and threw him down the order. Roland Ferrer trying to make a bit of time on him. Christopher McDuff also having a monumental time out there, having a great bit of fun. He's lying in 25th position at the moment with Doe Herbert trying to close down the gap on him. So a couple of drivers going and battling their way through, not having the easiest of runs at the moment. But we'll have to see how it all claws back. A couple of damaged cars, though, as we see the front of Willem Wurter, front left, not looking as straight as it would like to be, with Werner Swart now looking up on the inside to try and capitalize on the straight line and impact. Gets around him without too much of an ease. And uh, Willem Wurter now needing to dig deep on this one. Jakob Stein trying to also close down the gap sporting the old BMW M4 performance parts and uh, good to have them out there but has got our class leader for the program Andre Kerman going and closing down the gap Timothy Stanton a little bit further back trying to make his way back up through the field and not having the easiest run of it so we'll have to see how he can make a bit of time to take a look at the front of that car definitely not the smiling face that we've seen on the BMW before. No, absolutely, absolutely, Stephen. It's um, it's quite interesting to see the, the difference in straight line speed from just having one front corner being damaged on the car, and uh, uh, Timothy Stanton definitely uh, getting in uh, the welcome into the Flowbird side after winning uh, the previous season's A4 championship in the Pro Am class. So he's definitely got his, his job cut out for him in the in heat one of this race. But uh, he just says keep on going. And remember, there's still a E2 coming where most points, we can still get quite a few amount of points out there. But um, it's it's good to see them going on. So drivers are trying to push themselves a little bit harder, trying to figure out what's going to work for them. At the moment, Luke Lucchese trying to get onto the back of Julian Familiaris and pull away from Urium Piswat. They're fighting it out in second, third and fourth place. Troy Dolinchek checking it out 1.8 seconds away from the fight. 
So he's really doing a fantastic job out there. Uh, Mario Rez, got to also talk about him. He's down in 18th position. Done a phenomenal job climbing up six positions so far in the Pro-Am division, going after Christopher Hoppensel, a driver he has not competed with at all, to my knowledge. So trying to chase down some new talent and learn how that's going to go for him. But he's got a lot of pressure from the likes of Willem Pinar, and you can see right behind him, he's trying to gain a bit of ground and do everything he can to battle it out. This is heat one, though, of the race face, race face of Pro BMW Z4 Championship here tonight. And we do have a heat two coming up where the top five will be inverted. And as we know, that can really change up the entire dynamic of the race. And when I say change it up completely, Cameron, you had that first hand. You landed up in fifth place and then suddenly starting at first with all the pros sitting behind you going, um, now what, well, guys? this is going to be fun, yes. And it's on uh, Mount, uh, Mount Panorama Bathurst of all tracks where I had to experience that, which wasn't the most fun one, but that will be where, yes, it's a first round, but it will also be, you need to be smart in terms of you know who, who are the guys that's normally your pace. Do you want to battle the guys in front, go for glory, wreck your tires, maybe impossibly get the wreck yourself and other contenders, or just focus on your own race, get the car across the line, score good points against your rivals, and hopefully later within the, within the championship, the front runners might cause an accident on their own, damage the car, and have to tire the car. It's all about being strategically smart, who you battle, who you want to face, and what you want to do if you, if you find yourself being in the front of that starting grid and not having the pace as the front runners. And this is coming from a guy as we see contact between Mario Rez and Flani Gravesine. Uh, 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 sorry, that's Christopher Oppensall. Uh, so Mario getting ahead of Christopher who gives a little bit of a cheeky flash saying, hey buddy, that was a little bit of a uh, knock there. Not a big fan of that. Willem Pino though is going to capitalize on the frustration now. Gaining some ground, looking to try and go for a pass. Closing, closing, up on the inside. Just couldn't get the later on the brakes and had to bail out of the run. So, so close, yet so far. And, uh, yeah, I was going to say, this is coming from a chap that wanted to go door to door. How you have grown up and how you are getting old, Cameron. You are getting I old. Mean, you, you've, you've taken advice to heart <laughs> to the point that she's slowing down, buddy. Is a problem here. Uh, slowing down, you wish, Steven. I mean, I still go door to door with some of the fast guys, but again, you have to be smart in terms of your championship point, you, what you want to do. Um, just because, I mean, just you've because got, you're you've faster got four doesn't mean... Exactly, but just because you're... Yeah, you have to think about the long If you've got multiple rounds left, you have to choose. But um, if there's not much left, you try to make a big impact in terms of getting as much points as possible away from your... From your contender even though they are scored individually it depends also you want to get the nice little gap that you want to have to them. but um hey speaking of growing up i'm not that old okay my body might say i'm old but i'm not that old <laughs> all right well taking a look at that we're into the 15 minute mark at 30 minutes the race will end all after 20 laps uh troy dolinchik out in front Beating the charge, Julian Familiaris in second place, Luke Pekesi in third, Gary Umpi Swart in fourth place, Johan Ferri in fifth, followed by Ryan Ottens, Jason Kutsi, Werner Swart in eighth, Willem Boerta in ninth, and Paul Herber in the top ten of our pro division. Take a look at our pro am. We got John Dre uh, we got Catherine Jensen, who is having a great time out there, Rudolf Tolleman. Uh, Farni Gravenstein, Mario Rez in fifth place in the pro am for by Willem Pinar, Christopher Hoppensall, along with Roland Ferreira and uh, Ferret Reed, also new driver coming in and having a bit of fun. And tenth place is Robbie Teens of uh, Teenings Bolt going and uh, showing off what he can do there. So some really, really good door to door action with some of the drivers, whether you be in pro, whether you be in pro am. But it does look like Farni Gravenstein has pulled into the pits, and that is going to allow for a bit of a shuffle. Jokostein also pits it to try and get his car sorted out. So small mistakes starting to come into play, and drivers having to get themselves sorted out. 
and hopefully get back on track. Fonny Gravenstein though and Christopher Arbenstall unfortunately dropping down the order. You need to be well aware this is not ideal for them. Well, Stephen, now this brings into question, did they already use their first set of tyres to the point where they are, where they have no rubber left, where the pace has dissipated to the point where they are losing tenths of a tenth of a second so much over a, over a lap time that they have to say, listen, let's get into the pits, put some fresh rubber on, get out the rubber mallet and knock out the bumps and things that we had sustained on our front fenders or even just replace that whole entire front body bodywork we saw a lot of people dropping down the order as they went into the pits with Julian from uh, Familiaris and Yuri and Biswat dropping uh, popping into the pits there. I don't so, think there's enough fuel in these cars to go the full the full stint. That's that's also something that uh, drivers might have decided listen let's do a little let's go light on the first one or the fuel tank might not be big enough to run the full 30 minutes but that would be quite strange I mean these cars have quite large fuel tanks so it's might been have restricted set up oh. uh, the setups and this is this is what I've just got information. So the setups are fixed, but there's also just enough fuel to get you into the race. You have to get into the pit box, get yourself sorted, and get going once again. So you got to do a splash and dash. And that does change up the game. Who is going to have the better pit strategy come the long run? Now, I mean, at the moment, our top drivers like Troy Dolinchik sitting with 10 laps on their side with uh, Luke Bacchese also with 10 laps. So there's a couple of drivers trying to go that little bit more and trying mm. to see if they can go a little bit deeper into the race. Others, on the other hand, can't get in and do the full stint. So they're having to get in the box, get sorted, and get going once again. So it's who's favoring the fuel tank a little bit more to ensure that they keep the running order and that's going to be a bit of an interesting one for all the drivers who will be able to claw their way to victory in the yes, long run who will be able to do the master class that is Stephen Koenig what he done with us with the light foot just not too heavy on the throttle just caressing it very slightly to get an extra lap or two as you see I wonder if there was a bit of a bump there from the Alpha 1 esports car there onto Yuan Furi um, but yes we will be able to just not be as heavy a lead foot on the throttle pedal and just get a little bit more out of it but uh, I think we'll, we'll see most of the cars getting going into the pits now uh, popping up on fuel getting the tires changed and then going on from there but yeah. it's about right halfway oh, to the race I think Troy Dolinchek, Luke Bacchese, Yuan Furi uh, all into the box and it does look like Ryan Otten's getting a slightly better jump they're gonna go door to door on the way of the exit <laughs> gotta be careful yeah, boys this is Ooh. going to be a proper proper race uh, this is a fixed setup race uh, daddy racer and daughters uh, I know going and asking this is all fixed setup on the baseline setup so all the drivers have the same setup you can adjust your brake bias, and that's pretty much all she's got. And uh, Dolinchik is definitely cooking tonight. Just hold on, let him cook, as there's an old saying that goes to it. Interesting oh. enough, <laughs> interesting enough to see that you can see the strategy is coming into play. Dolinchik done 11 laps on his first tank. Familiaris now in second place, did 10 going for an undercut and it doesn't seem to have played into his favor as he's got Yuri Umpiswat immediately onto the back of him. They are currently about two seconds off the back of uh, Troy Dolinchik. So there's still a bit of time there for the strategies coming into play. And the driver's having to think what's going to be the most ideal situation for their race. Who's going to be able to go? But a splash and dash is needed now you can use auto fuel now that is the uh, sim works out what your fueling is and gets you back out and going great stuff but it over fuels you even when you say i've got to put in one lap it will only give you three or four it will always over fuel you or if you wish to get a little bit spicy you can go and fuel yourself and set what your fueling is but you do run the problem of running too little fuel and you get the spluttering to a stop coming into play so bear that in mind mm. 
if you're trying to go for a bit of a pit stop, if you're trying to get on top of one another and ensure that you stand on the top of the charts. But at the moment, Troy Donchick, Julian Familiaris and Yuri Pissuart are doing everything in can. Ryan Artens has got Jan Ferri, our multiple time champion for club racing, for two times for the TCRs and also for the Clear Cup. But as you can see, the drivers now trying to carve their way through the back markers. And it's not going to be easy having to take some very, very risky passing through some of the tighter corners. And Jan Free having to also do everything he can. That does bottle up the pace for a few drivers. Arty Narkel getting uh, the jump on Fonny Gravenstein, who then dives up on the inside. They're running in 16th and 17th position, trying to chase down Rule of Tillman just ahead of him. So definitely some very, very interesting racing at hand. The drivers having to work out how it's all going to end up in the long run. A couple of drivers doing everything they can to really battle it out. But Troy Dolinchik going and cooking out in the front with Familiaris in sixth place, Yuri Pisuart in third that the new dynamic coming into play is the yes it's uh, well, the, the pistol stops are definitely new dynamic so it will throw the drivers completely out of what they normally have just running right until the end um, specifically with this car as you said we as, we as mentioned before it's a legacy car not many people have driven it um, I think between if you compare myself and Steven here Steven has more experience with this car seeing as this, as this is his first ever uh, GT3 uh, I think in the I racing world you said Steven but I was just in the Ferrari 488 before the Evo and before the 296 so even I'm new to this car I'm to drive it but um, drivers who are not familiar with definitely going to be struggling struggling going to be relying heavily on that auto fuel function that you discussed earlier Steven to get them over the line um, I always have it rather run a bit of fuel extra in terms of the sputtered to a head right before the line as Toyota did in I believe, 2016 at Le Mans where they almost had a victory and just just ran out of field when they were supposed to cross the line to do one final lap. We don't want that tonight in the sun. Yeah you've had I've actually had that and it makes a horrible horrible feeling especially in this car uh, it gives you stutters and actually locks up the rear diff a little bit so you've got to be so so cautious in case it decides to do that and uh, makes it life a little bit too interesting. So, Young Free now falling off the back of Ryan Alton. Now the battle is staying form. Paul Ferber and Jamie Reese doing a phenomenal run. Roland Ferreira, though, uh, currently in 13th position, is leading out the charge for our Pro-Am. So great to see him going and having a monstrous fight at the top of the charts showing if he can gain that little bit more time hoping that just maybe tonight will be the night to stand on top of the titans shoulders keeping it extremely consistent yes so uh, as we see uh running for is the new leader out in terms of our pro am they um as i see that uh, john uh, john ray uh, Kerman dropped nine positions he was our leader for the first 15-ish minutes and then I believe somewhere between when we with the pit stop cycle or before that something went wrong and he uh, dropped nine positions um, not exactly the race that he wanted for tonight uh, for heat one but um, it's it's kind of curious to hear what's going on there but who knows maybe something happened with the car and unfortunately just glad that it's continuing continuing driving there and uh, as you see Fanny Craven staying battling out here with Rudolf Tolman uh, Rudolf Tolman, uh, Tolman is a very new name uh, a new name to our seven team if I have correct and it's great to see him taking it to uh, the second place finish in the F4 uh, championship from last season and uh, I'm not gonna lie Stephen this actually gives me a bit um, gives me a bit of an advantage in terms of my competition for next week eh? <laughs> just adds a little bit more spice to it and I've got a funny feeling that some have overfueled and others have underfueled. Rilla mm -hmm. Tolleman has got funny grab scene right behind him. Artie Narkel who's racing in the pros has to try and get round the drivers. He's doing everything he can to battle it out. Not having an easy run except for the contact mm -hmm. that's just happened. Rilla Tolleman getting a little bit of a knock there and uh, let's take a look at what happened under braking with Farney Gravenstein trying to look around him. 
hard on the brakes and oh just rear mm. contact that threw him out and that's all she wrote for that position unfortunately there is going to be damage to the rear suspension and uh, Rolf is going to be driving with a bit of a limp at this point yes um, it's uh, it's very interesting a gap immediately dissipating there going there but as you said the rear suspension damage is going to be there it, he's definitely going to feel the tires are going to start going off at the rear much more quicker than they normally had in the first stint that he was running. So um, the rear is going to be very, very, it's going to be, it's going to be quite alive, you can say. But it's going to be interesting to see how he manages to bring that car to the end, uh, well, to the uh, end for this heat one, this even. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> that is definitely what is being sung at the moment for our drivers who are fighting it out, doing everything that they can to claw their way to the world of victory. But not going to be an easy one. Jakob Stein also on a monumental charge, trying to make up some positions as he looks to battle it out from the, the drivers. Not going to be an easy fight at hand for him. As he's got Jason could see, who's keeping it nose to tail at the moment. These two know each other way back. There used to be a, a category called the Porsche Cup uh, that was out here in South Africa. That's where you used the Porsche Cup cars, and you could then later move up into the GTE class if you were fast enough within, I think it was the top 10. And uh, the guys had a great time trying to claw it up. I know that my personal experience with the Porsche Cup car is... Um, mm -hmm, or, questionable. Uh, yeah. Not favorable, not fond memories, but, I can say. <laughs> by, by the time I got to grips with the car, uh, it, it all ended. Uh, it's it's a, one of those difficult cars. But the Z4 being a very, very planted vehicle, naturally... Oh, as we see Rolf of <laughs> uh going in, causing Byron what Mitchell, who get, yeah, Byron Ooh. Mitchell closed up the gap a little bit too fast there, and unfortunately that got him out of shape and having to uh, move back into line. So not having an easy time out there, but doing a phenomenal job. Byron Mitchell also coming from the world of real racing and having a bit of fun and also known in endurance racing teamed up with uh, the likes of Peter van der Spee and they were racing in the A plus the A plus car I can't remember what it was called uh, it was the Juno and uh, the two of them did a phenomenal job Byron actually working on, worked on that car day and night to get it all sorted out and then we got uh, Captain Jensen. I, I wish I could give more about the driver. It's a very, very new driver to the world of South African sub racing. A little bit of damage to the front nose. That's going to hurt straight line. And as you can see, Byron Mitchell just able to eke ahead. Can be a little bit later on the brakes. And uh, Jensen having to just back out of it as Byron gets right onto the back of Tolman. So drivers doing everything they can. But we are now into the final dying moments of the race and Troy Dolinchik doing everything he can he will be coming across the line getting the checkered flag taking first place for our pros and first of our heat ones for the BMW Z4 Cup brought to you by Raceface and then second place going to Julian Familiaris who is going to be happy with that Yuri Mpiswart in third Ryan Ottens taking fourth place Jan Ferri out in fifth Philip Goethe trying to make some ground will be closing up in that sixth place. But a battle still ongoing. Yaku Stein battling after Jason could see ahead of him. He's lost out the drive and now Luke Pekezi trying to close up on him, but unfortunately getting caught up in a bit of a mix of his own as Jamie Reese and Paul Herber battle across the line. Paul making his triumphant return to the world of sim racing after having a little one. And uh, he's got a little mini-me that will be taking over the rig in due course. So he's just soaking it all up before the mini-me goes and takes his seat. Roland Ferreira taking first place of our prams, keeping it consistent in the early pit stop to make it work. Christopher McDuff comes out in 14th position, 13th in our pro division. RT Narkel finishing up in 15th. Fonny Gravenstein comes across the line. He's going to be happy with that. Byron Mitchell also comes across the line. So some phenomenal, phenomenal racing 
right the way through but this is only heat one ladies and gentlemen we still have plenty more to come this evening we got a heat two that is on the way and we will be going and reversing our top five here tonight Yes, so now this is where the real fun kicks in if the top five. Um, Joy Dolanchek is an extremely fast driver uh, and will try and find and be as quick as possible to get past the drivers that are in front of him. Now, he has unfortunately, well, fortunately he has some tough competition, competition ahead of him with um, Yuan Fury going to be starting on Paul and Ryan Ottens being in, uh, in second place. So it's... Uh, it's not going to be a very easy battle for him as he had in previous occasions. He's going to have to really fight it out. As we take a quick look here at the final well, final results for Heat 1 um, uh, in the, as across the line there. So, as I said, top 5, and Steven said top 5 will be reversed. So, uh, Fari will start in P1, Ottens will be P2, Swart will stay where he is in terms of P3, and Julian Familiaris and Troy Dolanchek taking up 4th and 5th. So, uh, Stephen, I think we're in for quite a battle tonight. Now, this is our pros showing off. So, Troy Dolinchek taking first place. Julian Familiaris followed by Yuri Swart, Ryan Otten, Jan Free, Willem Boerter, Werner Swart in seventh place. Jason Kutzi, Jakub Stein, Luke Lucchese, Jamie Rees, Paul Herber, Christopher, M Christopher McDuff, Artie Nachel, Byron Mitchell, Arno Kraus, Doe Herber, Timothy Stanton, Christopher Radloff, and Jason Murray finishing up in 20th position. With 21st, Yaz Mai unfortunately having to retire the car and uh well took some damage and he got himself going but i think the first car was wiped out taking a look at our pro-am we have got roland ferreira Fani gravenstein roloff toleman Catherine jensen out in fourth place robbie teens mario rez Willem pinar Jopo simons chandre kerman lewis okia and uh, christopher heppensall followed by gerrit reed that will have crossed the line in that running order our top five will be reversed though and that will change things up for our racing yeah tonight yes it definitely will Stephen. Uh, uh, just a, a moment reminder that only the top five overall will be changed so if there's a pro uh, am driver there they will be switched but currently as it stands the pro am drivers will stay as they finished right there but um it's now the drivers and teams need to get ready if your car got wrecked extremely badly or components got damaged in the first in the first race even they need to now get that second car out and ready to go or just switch components as a, a part over as fast as possible even if it's a upright uh, a suspension arm just quickly change them over get the car ready and snap everything on and get it ready on the grid the cars will be brand new for this race um, no damage will be carried over the teams are permitted to have to field their second car or fix the one if it's not too badly damaged so it will be a semi-even playing field you can say well you say semi-even it's going to be a monumental run for everyone having to uh try and close down the gap troy donchik uh, uh Jens, it's so much to play for here this evening and once again we'd like to say thank you very much to all the drivers joining in, to all the teams, and also to you guys, the spectators. Good to have you. We are currently on a warm-up, so this allows our drivers to get themselves all prepped and ready for a bit of fun. Take a look at our overall results, though, for our run in the previous race. Troy Dolinchik will be starting in fifth. Julian Familiaris in fourth, Yuri Swart in third, along with Ryan Ottens in second, and Jan Ferri will be starting in first place. A uh, couple of guys that have also joined, unfortunately, landing up in a different server, oddly enough. Uh, not 100% sure what what happened with that, but uh, that will need I, to be I investigated. Think... I think it might be due to the new system that was also implemented, Stephen, where uh, we're trying to use a different approach on how we organize and put on the races. Um, some communication might have been gotten lost there a bit there. But I'm sorry to see you guys, unfortunately, missing out this race, but do not worry. There is still three rounds left in this championship uh, where you guys can come back and bring the fight to our drivers that are currently out here tonight. And uh, I think uh, Stephen can also contest three rounds are more than enough to make a big impact, in, impact into a championship. 
Oh yeah, there is no question to that one. The drivers will have to figure out what they can do, how they're going to do it, who's going to be able to get their way onto the top of the charts. As we got uh, Christopher Hansel out on the track at the moment, showing off what he can do. Let's actually jump on board into the roll bar of BMW Z4. Listen to the absolute screamer as he makes his way around the circuit gently through the gears trying to just get used to the car and before we head into round uh, the second heat of the evening I have, will have to say it is a stunning stunning car for anyone that hasn't driven the BMW Z4 at all it's one of these cars that if you have the opportunity to do so go for it if you can go for it it's not used at the moment it's uh, it's only used three times in the official series with the bmw m championship uh but at the moment it is used in our league because we wanted to bring out a legendary car who knows maybe next time we'll go and have all the drivers having a bit of fun in the gto let's take a look at the grid though and we have got Johan Ferri out in first place, Ryan Ottens in second, Yuri Swart, Julian Familiaris, Troy Dolinschek, uh, along with Willem Boerter, Werner Swart, Jason Coty, Jaco Stein, Luke Lucchese, Jamie Rees, Paul Herber, uh, going down through the order, Roland Ferrer, Christopher McDuff, Artie Nachel, Fanny Gravenstein, Byron Mitchell, Rolof Tillamont, Catherine Jensen, Robbie Teens, Mario Rez, Willem Pinar, Arno Kraus, Juppie Simons, and uh, going even further down, Doe Herber, uh, Jean-Drey Kerriman, Louis O'Kea, Timothy Stanton, Christopher Radloff, Jason Murray, Christopher, uh, Christopher Hoddenstall, along with uh, Jason, uh, along with uh, Yasumai and Kerrick Reed. Oof, got a little bit tongue-tied on the way through there. I do apologize. As we wait for the cars to take to the grid, and they will be exiting out of pit lane once again. Jan Free and Ryan Otten is going to go door to door with one another. Relive their battles. And uh, see what they can do for the final heat of the evening. This is heat two of our BMW Z4 Championship. Round one at Virginia. Glad to have you guys here. And a big thank you to joining in for all the actions. It is 21 degrees out on a circuit with no rain expected. A little bit of wind coming in, a bit of headwind coming in. But our drivers will have to drive through that here out in the USA at Alton. So good to have a nice burger, a good drink, and kick back and relax with the amazing sights and sounds of the BMW Z4 as it makes its way around the circuit. Got to say love this little car so depressed it was replaced by the bmw m4 gt3 the ugly beaver teeth versus this i mean come on uh, bmw this is what we want we we don't want what uh, the ldmh or the M m4 of now we want this we do want the ldmh i mean ldmhs people view f1 as the pinnacle of motorsport sorry i have to argue that LMP, not when, uh, not LMP when it looks like, no, not when it looks like a whale. Okay, it, but these cars look like the, the Mercedes AMG Evo GT3. Because sorry, fight me. <laughs> it's a German thing, it seems. <laughs> and you know but what? You know what? You know what's the best part about it? It wins championships because it works. <laughs> well, I haven't seen a BMW win, oh, a Mercedes win a championship just yet. But um, yes, well. Here's a little something funny, Stephen. Do you know the history behind the logo of the BMW? No, but I do know we're about to go racing, so it might be an idea a little bit later to uh, <laughs> get a bit of insight there as our safety car lights are off. Grid trying to get the pack up together and the Constantino effect is going to come into play. Uh, but a quick one, give us a little bit of history on the BMW logo. So, if you look at the BMW logo, it looks like an airplane propeller. This actually brings in the history of BMW where they used to previously produce airplane engines. But the small single prop ones, funny enough. 
Well, it's fine if you go and look at Porsche's history. They were part of the the, the the Tiger <laughs> the Tiger P. And do you know what the Tiger P was synonymous for in history? No, no, no. In what? World War Two. In World War Two. Do you know why it got such a fantastic? It's gotten a infamous history, if I could put it that way, oh, that you wouldn't more. you wouldn't expect from the Porsche name. Hmm. Curious to know. It was the most unreliable tank there was. It used to break <laughs> its engine, overheat, and destroy its drivetrain. It had the most self casualties in history because of breakdowns. Sounds like the first the first version of the Porsche and the H cars in the first round at the mark. But uh, as we get ready for green lights, Stephen, you throw it over to Tim for us. Yeah, Tim on the cameras, Jim on the mic to go and shout it out to go green. You have three getting a little bit pace here. Ryan Otten's dropping a little bit back, waiting for the opportunity to go. And Free dropping the hammer early, long since gone. And everyone caught sleeping at the line. Ryan Ottens has got Julian Familiaris all over the back of him. Yuri on Piswat's going to take for a big dive up into turn one. Couldn't get it all sorted out. Troy Dolinschik going and closing up the distance as well. So Ryan Ottens has been left to fend against the pack behind him, which is not going to be an easy thing. He's going out a little bit wide. And that has Julian Familiaris trying to gain a little bit of ground. He's watching his mirrors as Troy Dolinschik is doing everything he can to get past the likes of Yuri Umpi Swart, who is not making life any easier for him. So Yuri Umpi Swart now trying to break away from the likes of Troy Dolinschik, who looks to go in and out, tries to go for a pass, couldn't get it all hooked in, and carries on putting on the gas as they fight their way around the circuit here at Virginia and a little bit of an unsettling moment for Jason Kutsi, the RDSA eSport driver not having the easiest of races at this point as he's got Willem Boerter onto the back of him Roland Ferreira leading out of our road Willem Tolman and O'Connor still doing a phenomenal job gaining some time in our Pro-Am so it is racing nose to tail as we see a whole train of cars, a whole slew of cars battling it out for position Jason could see looks up to go on the inside of Willem Boerta Willem losing out that position and now we'll have to bring back the Toyota Gazoo racing in the big BMW how's that for ironic with uh, Werner Swart <laughs> onto the back of him and he is bringing Luke Lucchese with an immense amount of force right behind him Luke Lucchese not hanging back as he tries to push Werner Swart into a mistake locking up that inside line now switching to the outside, going to go a little bit late into the brakes. Everyone doing everything they can. Luke Lucchese, though, more comfortable on the inside line, managing to get past, and it screams onto the back of Willem Boerter. Yes, it's important to remember that Luke Lucchese is out of position from where he, where he actually statistically should be regarding this, but as we see the top five, this is literally a reverse grid from how it was, how they finished on the heat one. And these guys are not making it easy, not especially for our Heat 1 winner, Troy Dolinchek, who hasn't gained any positions since the start of the race. He's still stuck in fifth, directly where he started. The only two changes, well, the only change that really happened within our top five was Julian Familiaris taking over, well, being passed, very underscored at the start. But uh, it, Ryan Ottens is a, guy, it, well, is a driver who's well known on having to soak up this pressure of having four of very fast guys right behind him and he is doing a phenomenal job, even though he's two laps in, just to keep it where it is, um, as the other drivers run a bit wide in a few mistakes. But uh, so far down the grid, uh, we see in the pro class that Byron Mitchell has gained three, cha three positions on where he started. And uh, yeah, the pro the pro am grid, the Rudolf Tolman leading out there, and uh, Kath uh, Kathleen uh, Jensen sitting a very nice oh, second there. Oh, Ryan Ottens. Outbreaking himself, watching Julian Familiaris, Jumpy Swart, and Troy Dolinschik both, while well, all of them gaining a bit of time. Uh, Jason could see goes and gets past Ryan Ottens after watching the mirrors, unfortunately missing the brake marker just by a couple of meters, has thrown him back into the fray. And Luke Lucchese now looking to go up on the inside of him. So he's leaning to try and put a bit of pressure on Luke Lucchese. Try to get him braking a little bit early. But we saw Luke is very comfortable into turn one. Gets it all hooked up. 
great, quite hard on the apex and gets it beautifully done by. So Ryan Ottens and Fortune B going and making one mistake and that threw right out of the train. I think that was my first ever commentator's curse that I've ever placed on somebody, Stephen, by saying that they can soak up the pressure and then unfortunately causing, uh, having a bit of a moment there. I sincerely apologize, Ryan, for that one, but uh, everyone unfortunately has to have a first uh, of that uh, commentator's curse. But uh, yeah, Stephen, this, the front four are running extremely close to one another. They are not giving anybody, well, any one of them, as you see, Troy Dolan Jake going a bit wide there, not giving one another an inch to make an advantage of one another. No, this is going to be most to tell racing, and they've closed up to Jan Fari. Now, Jan's going to not be sitting too pretty here yeah, as Yuri on Piswat's in the fastest time of the race so far, and he is amongst in this train. Jan Fari actually one of the slower of the bunch only by 0 0.003 and he is now losing out Julian Familiaris goes and takes it door to door he's locking up on the inside so Faree hoping to hold the apex but Julian Familiaris just having that straight line speed and he pulls the likes of Yuri Piswat and like that Jan Faree losing one two three positions in two corners and that is definitely going to make someone start getting a little bit heated underneath the visor but Jan Fury, unfortunately, just couldn't hold on to the same pace. A little bit slower under braking. Troy Dolinchik tries to get, look for a pass, couldn't get it all sorted out. But remember, they do have that pit stop that can change the entire game. So saving a bit of fuel now may be the best thing you can do. Yes, absolutely, Stephen. I mean, they can either wash their tires now and then just do a splash and dash, get the fuel on. But as you, as me and you both know, that adding fuel and changing tires, you maybe gain, a, you're not, you don't get, you can gain as much time regarding that. So it's much rather just change tires, get the fuel in and get it done. But uh, Joy Dolanchek making a very nice jump. He's getting five positions now, from where he started. He is clawing his way back into the top four battle. He is not giving up yet on this race. He wants to win this race. So, but as you said, still a pit stop to go. It's anybody's game at this point. It is not over. It's a monumental fight. Everything comes down to who's going to be able to claw their way to victory. Who's going to have enough of a run? Luke Kersey also making up a bit of time. He's trying to get past for the Puerta who went and stopped bit earlier he has got Ryan Ottens all over the back of him the side of him pretty much all you know anywhere you can look you've got Ryan Ottens mm. onto the back of him pretty so, much the passenger seat at this point <laughs> yeah that's it you are watching the drivers like an absolute hawk at the moment trying to see what works what doesn't who's going to have enough pace underneath them and how the race will evolve a couple of drivers have pulled into the pits Christopher Hoppensall, Willem Boerter and John Ray Kilman. Uh, but it does look like Christopher Hoppenstall unfortunately has sustained damage and that is why he's in the pits having to tow the car back and uh, unfortunately that knocks him way down the order. Herrick Reed also doing a phenomenal job trying to pull his way up through the fight but let's talk about the top end of the field for our pro-ams once again Rolf Tillerman and uh, Jensen and Fon great to see going at one another so good to see the drivers showing off a bit of their skills and who will be able to claw back the victory with the uh, Tolman going side by side with Jensen Jensen around the outside trying to get a little bit more drive looks over the curve very difficult to get it all sorted out through the snake and Tolman having to lift off the throttle ever so slightly to get himself all into check. So great to see we've got a battle of the genders with mm, Jensen going and fighting out with Tolman. It's, it's great to see Stephen um, with, uh, uh, with Jensen leading the way now showing that that they can, well, she can also take it out on Jack and take it to some of these guys. It's, I absolutely love it, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's really great to see, not backing up, but I also do know that on the laps that I've done around this track, that if you can get the front the front of your tire, the front tires, no matter which, in terms of which way the corners, if you can get it hooked onto that curve, it just 
pulls the car into that corner. Then you can carry a bit more speed and get a nice little slingshot going onto a straight. And uh, I think that's what uh, uh, Jensen managed perfectly right there. Oh, we've got Yaku and Paul Ferber trying to go at it. But let's go back up to the sharp end of the field as you see a couple of drivers pulling into the pits. Julian Familiar is leading out the pack with Troy Dolinchek right behind him. Miriam Biswat also giving chase at the moment. So they're catching up to uh, what looks to be Jamie Reese that's ahead of them. Jamie Reese a little bit out of order from uh, the Heat 1 incident. And now Heat 2 just doesn't seem to be having a bit of a fun time out there. These Z4 GT3 cars not having the same luck as our current GT3 cars and all the, the special tendencies that we, we so enjoy. These cars do rely on a little bit of a blip to get them in. It requires you to really push hard. The traction control doesn't quite work. The ABS is okay. It's not the greatest. They do lock up. They've got a long throw in the pedal, which you have to be well aware of, and they don't have as much aero as possible. Jamie Reese jumping out of the way and allowing the cars to get by, but in turn has fallen into the clutches of Roland Ferreira going in close a couple distance. So our second, third, and fourth still on a monumental charge, but Julian Familiaris starting to open up the run and do everything they can. Yes, no, absolutely, Stephen. But um, I, I just quickly did some quick research here when you were speaking about the car not getting as much love as it normally did. Um, now, this is a car that it is, it's a very good pedigree. I mean, this car is good in endurance racing. I mean, it even won the Spa 24 hours. So it's not one that just, it's not just a car that's out there. It's not as uh, strong. It's actually not, it's stronger than its, than its current M4 version, I would rather say. And um, the more I look at it, the more nice it is. I'm not gonna lie. I still remember seeing this car, I believe, in one of the Bo uh, James Bond movies uh, of Pierre Brosnan. A very beautiful car, both in with the racing uh, with the racing trim on it and just normal road car. Well, this is the V8 version, so they did make a limited a limited run of the Z4 in a V8 version as a, to allow it for GT3 racing. Uh, but we also got to take a look at, uh, as you said, won the Spa 24, came into the top three during Le Mans as well when GT3 was first being introduced and started taking the place of the GT1s and GT2s which is like your, che your Chevrolet ZR1 uh, well Z06 and Z05 at the time so the Z4 really came into its own there a great endurance car it was also one of the highest selling customer GT3 cars that you could get hold of and a lot of uh, drivers actually getting hold of the road going Z4s both the the straight or going for the V8 and the non V8 version, converting it into a racing trim, which you will still see out racing to this day. Uh, I know here in South Africa we've actually in the extreme supercars. There is one that has been modified over time of race with the triple ones and then moved into the world of uh, the extreme supercars done a phenomenal job in building that car up front engine but the engine closer to the cockpit than you would think much to the remnants of like the mercedes amg gt3 evo that we have got racing on current and this front engine beast is fantastic mercedes answer to it was exactly the mercedes uh, the, the amg that came out and a lot of people actually made part of lost versions of that very same car, equipping it with the likes of a rotary engine to ensure they get a little bit more grants. It was actually used in the world of uh, racing, short over racing. Mm. So, um, yeah, there you go, folks. Some a nice little history behind the Z4 here, uh, just to get some nice little insight into this car. Uh, it's. I still remember watching all the, oh, as you see a, a car there, that looks like a Yuan Free going a bit, uh, very, uh, going on an excursion <coughs> trip to, um, I don't think Virginia, uh, Virginia Beach, I can't even make that, that little connection there, but uh, going there on a bit on an excursion uh, to the farmlands there. So, uh, it, I know it's a legacy car, but that doesn't need to check, so <laughs> it's best rather to stick 
between the two white lines. But uh, yeah, it's nice. It's the history behind this car is so fascinating, Stephen. Um, and when you mention that rotary, I know it's not the same car, but if you mention rotary engines to me, I just for some reason think of that master that uh, going uh, on the Molson straight at the mall. That wine that comes from it, it is. I don't know if it's the same, but it just sounds so nice. If I did, hear rotary, that's what I think. Did we know that that the 787B as a rotary was actually eight seconds slower than the Jaguar XJR that used to race in the same class? Uh, so how's that for a bit of information in qualifying? <laughs> but the BMW Z4, one of the early adopters of the GT3s, was used continuously up until BMW eventually stopped their racing program for a very short and brief time the Z4 was benched while they did a lot of work on the BMW M4 GT3 it's also one of the older GT3 well one of the oldest GT3 cars that is racing on the iRacing service actively how's that one it is the second oldest car actually the first of the cars that is still actively running on the iRacing service since its inception is the Ford GT. Mm. Oh, that that makes race. sense. Uh, but I the mean, Ford that GT sense. has got the, the upgrade even to having uh, wet weather tires put on. So That's good. But I mean, it was, we, I know me and you discussed that uh, it's a bit of a tangent from the race. I mean, the race is still going on there. But um, we did have a bit of a tangent saying that it's sad to see uh, a discussion. It's sad to see that some of these old cars are unfortunately getting uh, put away, shoved into boxes due to not having the wet weather rain race tires. And it's, I'm glad to see that. Um, I know for so specifically the Ford GT um, is a car that I absolutely love. Uh, it's a very nice car. I love it always. And it's great to see that it's still getting, it's hopefully going to get raced a bit more. But um, it wasn't the M6 before the M6. Didn't the BMW stop their focus on the, Z, on the Z4 and move the focus on the M6, the GT3? The M6 was mainly brought, its biggest success was as a GTE car. It didn't do, uh, so, it didn't do so well in GT3, unfortunately. Uh, right. Running into reliability issues. The Z4 had reliability issues as well, as overeating uh, as its main run. But Jason Murray dealing a bit of a battle with Yaz Samai, who's having a better race than his Heat 1 as he fights it out, doing everything he can, trying to close down the distance, not turning into an easy feat at all, but uh, trying to make up some ground. Uh, Jean-Dre Kierman into the pits and uh, getting some work done on the car. Looks like it was a toe in as well. So let's go through the running order as we got Troy Dolinchik out in front, Julia Familiaris in the Second place, uh, Yuri Ompissoir, Dianne Ferry, Luke Mukesey, Ryan Ottens, Byron Mitchell in seventh place, Werner Swart, Christopher McDuff, Paul Herber, Artie Narkel in 11th position for our pros. We're carrying on with our pros. We've got Doe Herber, Jason Murray, Yaz Samai, along with Arno Kraus, Jamie Reese. Further down, Yaku Stein in 17th position for our pros, Timothy Stanton in 18th. 19th, Christopher Randloff, followed by Philip Wurzer, and the last of the running order is Jason Cotty, who has looked like he's retired the car. First of our pro-ams, though, is uh, Catherine Jensen with Robbie Teens in second place. Third place, Willem Pinar. Fourth, Roloff Tillerman, Farney Gravenstein, followed by Roland Ferreira, Yuppie Summons in seventh place. Uh, Fair agreed in 8th, 9th, Lewis Nokia, Mario Rez and Christopher Hoppenstall in 11th position with uh, jean Ray Kerman, who is now unfortunately in the pits trying to get the car sorted. But you see a couple of cars getting themselves in and out of the pits. Strategies coming into play once again. And let's take a look at the strategies for our top 9 cars. And they're all looking to get into the 10 lap stints. Remember, they can go 11 laps before they need to pull in the pits. And that's if you're driving them nicely. And the driver's are having to make up a bit of ground there. Uh, Byron Mitchell up 10 positions, might I add. So keep on him, he's still on the climb. Uh, Troy Dolinchik up four positions, Julian Familiaris up two positions, and Luke Casey up seven positions. So strategy will be the be-all and end-all in this race. Luke Casey fighting out with Ryan Ottens, a bit of a rivalry starting to build up between the two. 
good to see the guys still pushing as hard as they can. But Byron Mitchell up to 10 positions. Got a damage front end on the front of that BMW. And that unfortunately is making the car a little bit more difficult to turn in. Baseline setup on these cars is very understeery, a bit floaty, so taking a bit of damage to the nose does not help the situation. So you're going to have to bear that in mind as you race around trying to pull your way to victory. It's an absolutely Stephen. The, the cars, if it, a, a little hit in terms of these cars in the front in terms of the aero is very very upsets the car quite a lot but um with Byron mitchell just uh, well getting 10 positions i did a quick look scan well just a quick scan down oh and, um, all our leaders ooh. coming into the pits and a bit of a pass on uh i think that that's one of our, our back markers or that might be mm. ferret reed yeah ferret who uh, suddenly had two of the pros go around right him on his gearbox oh they <laughs> They went around him in the pit lane saying, hey, listen, we've got to get in and get out as fast as possible. Now it's a race for the pit stops. And that allows Yuri Impi Swat to gain some time. So Yuri Impi Swat will be climbing up the order. The difference is, has he done his pit stop? Yes, he has. He gets past, gets up on the inside Ooh. and around the outside. Troy Dolinchik managing to hold his position. But what a run for him up into second place now battling it out nearly getting the undercut on everyone into the top 10 but unfortunately just came out with Troy Dolinchik right ahead of him pushing him out by Julian Familiaris also doing everything he could to try and maintain his position not working out in the long run unfortunately uh, not Stephen but um it's uh, it's one of those things. It's a, it's a strategy. It is how it is, unfortunately. But um, we need to keep an eye also on some of the cars down lower here. In terms of uh, uh, Yasumai, before the pit stops, he had climbed a successful 11 places. Um, he is still he's still in the fight for a good top 10 finish there. But it's just it just shows you that with accidents happening and everything happening that some drivers can capitalize a lot in terms of where they gain or how they finish. I mean, Yuri Ampiswat, a great, great um, uh, uh, out, uh, outlap there after his stop there. And he's right on the tail there of Troy Dolinchek. So it's um, it's quite quite interesting to see what's going on here. But uh, it's, it's, it's some exciting racing tonight, Stephen. It's going to be a monumental effort on all the drivers' parts to go and close up the distance as we into the last nine minutes of the race this is he two of the race face pro bmw z4 championship part of the club championship here in race face that has seen tcr cleos and now we're getting to have the race with the z4 it's going and swapping it out all three circuits for this season of bmw z4s running bi-weekly so the they will see their next race in two weeks time so it's all to play for four rounds two heats each makes eight races of pure fun with a fixed setup racing next week we will be heading back for the race based on pro f4 championship where drivers will look to close down the distance and the second voice you're hearing in your head with cameron Vassos going out of racing and yes I've went and said in your head and I know there's a certain person that's going to get a little bit cross going and getting a song I, in I'm, his head. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to mention it. Um, <laughs> I think every South African watching tonight will know a specific song that we adopted as our own of, even though after we lost against Ireland in the World Cup and we still, be, and we still won the Cup that song is still anthem, Boca. but it's it, no it, <laughs> i think it's zombie and um but our own edition of russi russi is in the head and i think uh, i think our um irish drivers might not favor me after tonight but um sorry we've been in your head since that uh, since that's a group stage um both in the rugby and on track there and uh, i'm just going to stop talking a bunch of nonsense here now Stephen, as i know that uh, it's going to be quite funny but um yes 
Well, Nico Gilliman <laughs> joining into the fray. Our top three still under 0.5 of a second, a little bit further back. Jan Free, Luke Lucchese, and Ryan Ottens also going and fighting it out. So we have got a three pack all the way around fighting for the run at the moment, trying to score valuable points for their championship. And uh, Troy Donchik leading out the charge with Yuri Piswa, Julian Familiaris is doing a fantastic job there. Yankuri soaking up the pressure of Luke Bikesi, who's taking a little bit more of a curve, trying to close it down. And Ryan Artems doing everything he can to put down the throttle. I think this is Ryan Artems, if, it, if I am correct, this is Ryan Artems' first time in a BMW no, it would be the second type because he did race a ACC BMW Z, uh, M4 GT3. Young Free goes out wide. Luke Lucchese trying to go around the outside. Couldn't get it all hooked up as they take their way down the long straight. This is where a bit of momentum, a bit of slipstream goes and favors. And who can get onto the brakes a little bit later? Troy Donnerchik going and making his name all the way in single seater racing. Yuri on Swad from more of your hatchback racing Jul uh, Julian Familiaris your mobile one V8 so we have got three different categories that they are very well known in each with their own forte of driving each utilizing in their driving standards at the moment you could see Troy Dolinchik going a bit more of a single seater approach trying to get the car to rotate a little bit more Yuri on Pissuart going and stabbing on the brakes as hard as he can, slings it in, takes an early apex, stands on the throttle and lets the car drive its way out. And Julian Familiaris utilizing all the throttle and uh, going and having the rear rotate underneath him as he tries to stand more and more onto the power, which is great to see. Jan Ferri going and fighting out with Luke Lucchese, two very good friends for many, many years, know each other very, very well out on the circuit and Ryan Ottens, a young gun, trying to get into the fray of things. And Ryan Ottens trying to stand on top of the Giants at the moment. If he can get past these two that are not making life any easier. But with time running out, it is going to turn into a dual die maneuver. It's going to be get on the brakes as late as you can. Get your nose in there. Force an opportunity because at the moment, everyone's soaking it up you know how difficult this is where you're going to have to just take a deep breath and go for that pass do you do it now do you do it later or will you sit going i should have done it a little bit earlier and you're going to have to take that into round two in two weeks time well steve unfortunately it is one of those things where you, you, it's easy to say just sit there, just take a deep breath, soak it up and get everything but in, in a moment in, in, when you're in the car, 15 million things are running through your brain. Um, will your tires all? Do you have enough fuel? Are you overusing your tires? Uh, will you over, uh, me specifically, if you overshoot, are you going to overshoot your next braking point? It's a lot of variables. You're always scared, especially if you're falling in close proximity to the driver in front of you. You don't want to wreck your race, also not the driver in front of you, because that would be a penalty. But um, it's always a question of, okay, where will I be able to make this move? Um, currently, there's only two laps left, really, in terms of getting a move done and dusted for Ryan Ottens and where he can capitalize. He spent more than enough time behind these guys to know where their weak points are where the weaknesses are, where the strong points are. Now he needs to choose his moment and stick it. Who's the best on the brakes? Who will be the Daniel Ricciardo of tonight and make it stick on the brakes and get the pass done for that position? As we see Yuri Swart, they're flashing his lights at Troy Donchik saying, listen here, buddy, I'm right behind you. You make a mistake, I will capitalize. These two know each other very well. They race each other and uh, <laughs> they're not making it easier saying, listen here make a mistake and I'll capitalize and that's the mind game that's also going on underneath that helmet for each and every driver from the top three all the way to the top six oh. so um one of, oh, one oh, of our, okay one of our back markers trying to move out of the way in a, a safe manner and father shaking the old uh, pit lane instead of uh, sticking it out there unfortunately yeah and that has been told as a big no-no that is not meant to happen the mm -hmm. stewards will be reviewing that so uh, 
yes, it's a safe approach, but rules are rules, and you can't do much about that. But our Just top like runners, Lewis Hamilton at Russia. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> for anyone that wants to know, uh, we've got Cameron Abbasos lives out in Pretoria. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a uh, bit of flashing lights from Luke Lucchese, who's gaining a bit of time. Doesn't want to get caught out behind number... Uh, that looks to be the number 30 car, our 30th position. And uh, that is Kirk Reed, who is just making his way around. Debut outing and trial by fire of note in the BMW Z4. Sporting the Yokohama colors and having a bit of fun out there. Time running out, though. As we head into the last remaining seconds of the race, Troy Novacek trying to put the hammer down and get away from Yuri and Pissuat. Julian Familiara is gaining a huge amount of time right behind him. And now Julian has to go and dig deep if he wants to go for the pass. Troy Dolinchek has opened up just enough of a gap, but if he loses out any bit of momentum right now, this will be a detriment to his race. So he's trying to snap the toe left to right. And instead of going all the way across, he went slightly, went to the middle of the circuit. That is just to upset the airflow. Everyone expects you to run to the fringes as he does now to hold back Yuri and Pissot. Yuri does to look to for the inside, couldn't get it past. Julian Familiaris tries to go a little bit late on the brakes. It is going to be a race down to the wire. Yuri getting a little bit of a tank slapper. He's lost out Troy Dolinchik and now Julian Familiaris all over the back of him as we get for the checkered flag. And Troy Dolinchik comes across the line, taking the checkered flag, making it two for two. Yuri and Pissuart finishing in second place. Julian Familiaris in third. Another close battle going on is Luca Kersey, who's broken away from Ryan Ottens ahead of Johan Fari as they come across the line. So Ryan Ottens just managing to get ahead of Jan Fari on the last lap. Byron Mitchell comes across the line and uh, gets himself sorted as one of our back rocks trying to pull himself back together. Werner Swart ahead of Christopher McDuff and Christopher done a phenomenal job getting into that top 10. He's in ninth position and well, well done on a fantastic drive. Jamie Reese crosses the line in 10th position. I think that BMW Steven has run out of fuel there in the background um, as it seems to be crawling across the line there. But as you see, Atin Achel there um, getting across the line in 11th place. Uh, very well done there on them also there. But uh, just taking a look there at our, our Pro-Am Steven. And we have our first female winner in our Pro-Am category. Well done, Caitlin Jansen, with Fanny Gravenstein, Ker uh, Jensen, uh, Fanny Gravenstein getting second there, and uh, Robbie Teens getting third. Well done to our top three there for our Pro-Am there. As we see the remainder of our Pro drivers going across the line, finishing the race, saying, breathing a sigh of relief, saying, whoo, what a very fun race. <laughs> I hope it's a fun race that we just experienced there, but well done to all drivers out there tonight. Well, Janssen has officially broken race face history. Mm. Our we have first female winner. Winner. winner well done. Across, across all sims that race face has had. Well done. I mean, that, that's no easy feat. Uh, but who says that motorsport is only for one? It is for everyone. But what a phenomenal race we have seen and some great, great racing out on the circuit this evening so we have got the drivers doing everything they can they made it all work and now we look forward to having a chat to the drivers when they come back in for a bit of a chat out here in the commentary box the altered carbon of Lewis or here making his way around sporting the SA Lube colors uh, it's actually a rebranded new racing team that's come into play. So good to see him out there. Always, always good to see new teams uh, coming out onto the onto 
well, getting into the racing there, and it's always nice to see them fight the out there. As we look at the results for our Heat 2, also the feature, well, known as the feature race there, as the final results there um, with our pro class, with Troy Dolinchek around him, taking that top spot, and Ju uh, Yuri Swart getting second, and Julian Fam Familiaris rounding out our podium there. And it's been a, a very close fight there. Look at that gap that separates them, Stephen. A second covering our top three. That was brilliant racing there. And Ling going down from our top three. Fourth, we had Luke Lucchese there. Uh, fifth, we are on Ottens just sneaking past Juan Ferri there. Um, in uh, sixth for Juan Ferri there. Brian Mitchell in seventh. Werner Swart in eighth. Christopher McDuff in ninth. And Jamie Reese there running out our top ten. Quickly looking over to our pro-am there um, for our top ten there. Uh, we have Kate, uh, Caitlin uh, Jensen round getting that top spot in our pro am. Well done on breaking and setting race face history, and Fanny Kramerstein getting second. Robbie Teens rounding out our podium with Roland Ferrero in fourth, Willem uh, Pinar in fifth, Yopi uh, Simmons in sixth, Louis uh, Louis Norke in seventh, Rudolf Tolman in eighth, Christopher Hepenstein. I hope I said that correctly. Hepenstein. There we go. Uh, in ninth, and Gert Reed running our top ten for the pro am there. Now some proper proper racing that is for certain. Good to good to see the drivers out there. Uh, but that does carry the points over in to the championship and uh, we can give you a quick look at what the championship will look like and this is just a a slight show uh, it can change Troy Dolinchik taking maximum points Julian Familiaris, Yuri Swart, Ryan Ottens, Jan Free, Luke Lucchese, Werner Swart along with Jamie Reese, Byron Mitchell, Christopher McDuff, Willem Boerter, Jakub Stein, Arti Narkel, Jason Kutzi, Paul Herber, Doe Herber, Anna Kraus, Timothy Stanton, Yasemai and Christopher Radloff going and rounding out our top 20 and uh, they will be trying to close up with uh, Jason Murray only scoring two points in the heat looking at our pro-ams for our provisional championship standings Fonny Gravenstein in first place followed by Roland Ferrer, Kathleen Jensen in third place but tied for second place take a look at that already a tie for second place <laughs> and uh, only three points off Fonny Gravenstein with uh, Robbie Teens in fourth role of Tolman, Willem Pinar, Yuppie Salmans, Mario Rez, Lewis Okia, Christopher Hoppensall, Jean-Dre Kilman and Kurt Reed rounding out our field of our proams. This is the provisional Stan Oak Championship standings. We will be seeing some work into it if there is any changes. But this does give you a good outlook of how the championships are going to go with some very, very close racing overall right here at uh, the likes of virginia gotta say what a phenomenal phenomenal evening of racing uh we're just waiting for a couple of our guys to come in and have a chat yes no absolutely Stephen. the racing tonight has been it's been phenomenal they um it's it, i think the drivers also try to get some heat into themselves because uh, from the call that we've been experiencing some lately there but uh no it's it's been absolutely fantastic racing seeing new names coming out bringing the fight to some of the older older more well-known drivers and not just go, uh, putting to the side letting them through um and taking the fight and bringing it to them so it's very good to see and um no, I'm I'm glad. I'm 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 excited for the season eight, Stephen. I think it's going to be an action-packed one, and uh, it's definitely going to be amazing. Now it's going to be a proper proper race. But you guys can get involved. Feel free to head down to the description. We do have our sim our sim grid link, and you can not only just join the Z fours, but you can also join up for the race phase F four championship starting next week. And we're looking forward to seeing the guys battle it out on track. But then we've also got our Discord. Feel free to join us out on the Discord here at RaceFace.pro. Whether you're a big fan of all the sim racing, whether it be iRacing, whether it be a set of course competition, we have it all. And for like-minded people, you feel free to have a chat with us. And uh, good to see everyone giving a bit of support for all the racing action happening 
during the course of this month. We also do have our ACC Nürburgring 24 hour coming up on the 20th of April. So feel free to join in for that one. That's going to be a ton of fun to see mm. the drivers battle it out. But plenty of racing here at Race Face. It looks like all our drivers are starting to come through now. We do have Fadi Gravenstein coming in to the commentary box. So let's bring in Farney Gravenstein. Farney, welcome to the commentary box. What a run on your side and what a race it was. How are you feeling after that? Oh, yeah, that was uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, this car is something else. I got a little bit lucky in the end. Uh, you know, some guys in front of me that uh, went off, I think, on the last lap. But yeah, it, it was really good racing, really a lot of fun. Now, uh, Farney, I mean, Virginia and the BMW Z4, a very, very difficult combo. Baseline setup, you would prefer to have more aero. But it seems like it challenged all the drivers. Do you feel that everyone was on an even playing field, being a car that not many people get to drive too often? Yeah, definitely. Um, you have to be very careful on the throttle of this car because even with the traction being at the four for the race, um, the, the rear is very loose. And uh, yeah, no, no, it, it, was, it was really good. Well, you managed yeah. to bag some very, very good points for the championship and taking a look at the provisional standings. You're currently at the top of the charts with uh, 78 points, but Roland Ferrer and... It, uh, Catherine Jensen both on 75 points not much breathing room in that respect what's the game plan heading into round two at WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Seca yeah I think the corkscrew at Laguna Seca is going to be very interesting with this car um, you know I, I just think everybody should should practice you know it's otherwise you're not going to survive that track <laughs> Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Oh, Cameron, anything you would like to say to Fonny Gravenstein? Well, um, just uh, pretty much, I think the question that uh, has been on my mind, even even though me and you discussed a lot, was Fonny, uh, you um, you you had to do a stop doing both of these heat races. Was this something that uh, you that you think the drivers prepared for in terms of what needed to be done? Or was it a bit of a newer experience? As I see, I do know that it's a newer thing for for our championship that's happening. How did you approach this? Was it a relatively new experience or were you kind of used to it? Okay. Yeah, I, I think uh, we had a practice session over the weekend and I think that helped a lot because then when I did the pits, I was changing tires as well. And then with the results afterwards, I could see a lot of guys were just filling up on fuel and leaving you know, the tires on. Um, so I think once everybody starts figuring out those things, uh, but, but it gave you a bit of strategy during the race because you could see that there's a, a guy in my class two cars ahead. But if I go in, maybe now he'll get some traffic, you know, so it, it, it gives a little bit more strategy to the race. It's it's really good. Well, well done, Farney Gravenstein. Looking forward to the racing and looking forward to seeing your racing out in the single seaters come next week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you going wheel to wheel with the likes of Cameron DeBastos. Uh, Fani, anything you would like to say to all the viewers, all the spectators and teams, everyone watching now and in the future? Uh, just thanks for joining. And if you want to join, please do come. These races are great fun. The guys are, are really good. And, uh, you know, everybody behaves themselves on track. It's really good, clean racing. And, yeah, and thanks for Race Face for always organizing these, these races. They, they're really good. Oh, that's good to have. Uh, thank you very much, Fonny Graham. Uh, Thanks, moving, guys. Moving on to Roland Ferreira coming into the commentary box. Uh, Roland, welcome. Uh, good to have you here. What a race it was out there. A bit of a challenging one for you, having to dig a little bit deep to uh, try and get the pass on a lot of the drivers and uh, sporting the new Altered Carbon Racing logos. What's the game plan heading into the race? Hi, Stephen. Um, yeah, the main main plan was to to try and just keep it clean. Um, so the 
myself and Louis discussed it in length, and we actually decided to put on lap two um, because it's better to to have a clear track in front of you. Um, and you, obviously, you won't know where you're at in, in until the race is finished. But um, it seemed to work, um, especially in race one. Uh, it's definitely uh, going to be an interesting one. Uh, I mean, heat one, heat two, challenging times, having the pit stops coming into play. You were in a fight start to finish, having quite a variety of cars around you. How was it when you suddenly had the faster cars coming through the field and you're in a fight on a very narrow circuit? What, what, was, the, what was going through the head as you as a driver? Stephen, it was quite tricky. Um, but, you know, obviously you can see the, the faster guys are significantly faster than, than what I was. So I just tried to let them go on the after long straight, especially turn one and before that uh, chicane, uh, before you get back to the main straight. Um, so I just break a bit a uh, hundred meters bef earlier, basically. So that was the main idea, just to let the faster guys go, but still keep myself in a in a fight with the guys that's that I'm actually fighting with. Well, you bagged some really really good points for this evening, and uh, taking quite a bit. You're currently second, but tied with uh, Kathleen Jensen. What's the game plan heading into Laguna Seca? Um, fun practice as much as we can um and yeah and then basically both races on laguna is gonna have to be clean um it's a shorter track but i mean with the size of the grid that it is uh it's not going to be easy um but if if we can keep it clean uh it, it should work out quite well oh, absolutely tremendous stuff thank you very much roland ferreira on joining us and we look forward to having a chat to you soon once again thank you steven well absolutely incredible stuff and let's bring in our winner for he to uh, Catherine jensen welcome to the commentary box glad to have you oops jumped out there we go uh miss jensen glad to have you here in the commentary box welcome how are you feeling after that one what a race and what a way to finish off the evening. He too with a win and also tying the points up heading into round two. And also a very warm welcome to you to the Race Face Dot Pro League of Racing. Hi. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed myself out there. Um, it's been a while since I've raced on this track, so it was a bit tricky at some points. But uh, yeah, went great in the end. The first race uh, got me a little bit unlucky during the pit stop as I racing did not let me stop refueling. So that was a little bit annoying, but uh, yeah, had a lot of fun. 123 liters going into the tank versus uh, the, the 9 or 10 liters that you needed. Uh, start of the race, though, 33 cars all fighting for positions on a very tight circuit. What was your plan of attack for this race? Well, my goal was just to race clean. You know, I know this track is very tight and I'm sure that if you give people the room to fight that you'll get a chance eventually to uh, pass or let them go. It, it depends. Clean racing is uh, key. And what's your thoughts of the BMW Z4 being a legacy car, not often used, but now getting to uh, stretch its legs once again? out on the magnificent circuits of iRacing. Uh, what's your thoughts of the car versus the current GT3s that we currently have on the iRacing service? Well, I love to see this car back uh, on track. <laughs> I actually started uh, sim racing in this car, so it's kind of nostalgic uh, to get back to it. Oh, that's... Uh... At least two of us can agree on the same thing before they, they replaced it with that horrible beaver teeth of an M4 that uh, I don't know why they, they've designed it that way. But uh, 
but I'm, you still I'm, drive it <laughs> not anymore uh, <laughs> if i if i had my option it would be the z4 and i think uh miss Jensen over here will also agree with that as well uh cameron anything mm. you would like to go and ask our esteemed guest before <laughs> we uh, let her go to enjoy the evening and work out what's the plan come round two considering she's tied for second place and three points off first well um uh, first of all i just want to say congratulations on uh, on getting that victory there in heat two there and becoming of course breaking our history well setting a new history for um in the race phase there as becoming the first female driver to win uh, to win the race yeah so congrats on that but also um how how did it feel racing again the racing against people you've never raced before um was there a bit of fear and how do we compare to the normal races that you would do one would say well i have to say uh this group of people i raced against here were a lot cleaner than what i usually see so i was very happy to uh, race against people that yeah give you room to fight but do like race nicely so yeah that was good no, get, that's that's good to hear. At least <laughs> gets get stuck into a fight. So considering we have I ratings from seven thousand all the way down to about six hundred, so it's good to have that mm -hmm. good mix of people. Well, uh, Catherine, uh, it's good to have you here, and uh, to all the spectators watching, all the teams, all the families that are watching now and in the future. Is there anything you would like to say to them? The floor is yours. Just keep it PG. <laughs> well uh yeah thanks for watching thanks for the support and uh yeah as uh the person ahead of me said if you want to join these people really race nicely and i think we can have a lot of fun if even more people join these types of races and uh yeah i hope we can give you all some more fun to look to watch at uh at laguna seca uh, it's going to be a fantastic one. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you in uh, two weeks' time or next week if you're racing with the Race Face Pro F Falls, uh, where you'll be going side by side with my co commentator. Don't worry, he doesn't bite, he only goes and <laughs> likes to meet walls. Uh, no, that's your speciality. I'm I'm clean. Well, you say fuel most of the time, but <laughs> yes, I hope to see, hope to see, uh, be able to share the track with you, uh, uh, Kathleen, sometime. And um, yeah, welcome to the community. And uh, what a amazing run there! Interesting to have uh, some communication with some very very interesting drivers, nonetheless. But that brings us to the end of the evening, right here for round one at Virginia International uh, Raceway for the Race Face Star Pro BMW Z4 Championship. And we look forward to seeing you guys heading into Laguna Seca. And keep an eye out on the social media. There is a lot more information to come. Uh, some very interesting information. I can't give away the secrets, but uh, I highly suggest if you're interested in getting into the championships, do get in touch. Join us in the Discord and be a part of it because you don't want to miss out what's coming next. Not even Cameron's allowed to know. Because I don't you, even know. <laughs> you're, not, you're not allowed to know because you're racing. So uh, as, as elites that are so fast, we can't, we can't even be on the same track as you guys. I have to uh, sit it out and we get to know the information. You know, that's the world's mm -hmm. fastest back marker over here knows more than you. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us out here. A big thank you to Cameron DeBastos for joining on the mic this evening at the Virginia International Raceway. Cameron, anything you would like to say in closing from your side? Well, nothing very much, Stephen, but again, thank you for having me and thank you for, for Race Face for allowing us to um, showcase uh, the skills of the drivers out there. And uh, yes, next week, week we are back at Virginia Raceway, but this time in the F4, I'm uh, eager to kick off that championship and this time take the fight and uh, hopefully proclaim it from my side. That's a bit of a uh, jab out there to my competitors there. But um, yes, and uh, some say Stephen Koenig might be the world's fastest back marker i just call him uncle slow but <laughs> that's that's all from us tonight and uh thank you everybody for joining and um see you next time from my side
And that'll be the last time you hear from Cameron about stuff, <laughs> that's for certain. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you very much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button along with the bell notification icon. Leave a like if you enjoyed the broadcast. And we'll see you next time, next week, for some amazing racing. Take a look at RaceFace.pro out on SimGrid as we got lots and lots of championships up for grabs, including that Norshafa 24-hour race on ACC coming up on the 20th of April. Get those entries in. Get your friends to join the party and come and have have a bit of fun out in the world of a set of course competition but like always i like to say good morning good afternoon good evening and good night everybody from here in the tht productions booth <laughs>